I used to think that to be successful, I needed to work 12 hour days at a minimum every single day, seven days a week. And I felt like if I wasn't so exhausted by the end of the day that I was falling asleep on my desk, I was making a huge mistake. I was going to be a failure and I was never going to accomplish anything. A lot of you can probably relate. We get hustle culture beat into our heads from a young age. And to a certain extent, you do need to work very hard to be successful. But experience has taught me that working less has actually made me more money and improved the quality of my life more than just about anything. The reason is because working hard is not what makes you rich or successful. It is what you work on that dictates the level of success that you have in any realm of your life. It helps if you can focus on your natural abilities and your talents because then work becomes a little bit more effortless. But you have to be very careful. Everyone says follow your passion. I don't necessarily think that is true. Your talents and your passion are not always correlated. And so in this video, we're going to discuss how to identify and focus on the right work for you. There are six points that I wanna go through with you that are gonna help you identify what to work on. Step one is you just gotta choose the right work. For example, if you are good at mathematics, you should be pursuing some type of career that leverages your ability to work to work with numbers. If you love storytelling, you should consider a creative endeavor. Maybe it's filmmaking, maybe it's being a content creator, maybe it's being a writer. But when you lean into your natural talents and abilities, it's going to give you the potential to do great work and achieve great things. You wanna aim for projects where your contribution can make a substantial impact. That can mean an impact on the world or an impact on the business that you're working with. But that leads me to step two, which is trial and error. There's inevitably going to be a lot of failure in this journey to finding out what you should work on. And the best way is to just get your hands dirty, experiment with many different types of work, This is gonna help you figure out your strengths and your interests. It's okay to dabble in different things and to see what you like and don't like, but you need to stay curious. You need to stay open-minded always. You can do this by taking online courses, attending workshops, or even offering to work a day for free in some business. Step three, and this is a really important one, is you need to work on personal projects. So you wanna focus on projects that are driven by your own goals and not a task that's been assigned to you by someone else. A couple examples would be starting a blog, developing an app, creating art in your free time. But these are projects that should challenge you and they should also excite you. They shouldn't be super easy. Now on to step four, we have to embrace curiosity. This is where following your interests is really important. You should dive deeply into subjects that interest you, even if they seem niche or unusual. And I'll give you an example. I've been in marketing for the past several years and I didn't even get a marketing degree. I was just interested in it. I thought it was cool. I thought the fact that you could come up with an idea and convince people that it's a good idea was really, really interesting. So you should study a specific aspect of science or a piece of history, just something that intrigues you, stimulates your curious mind. And from that, you can get to the frontiers of knowledge, meaning you can learn enough to reach the cutting edges of your field and become a pioneer. I had a mission and a goal to become known as the marketing guy. And that's exactly what has happened. There's a million ways to do this. You can read research papers. You can go to networking events, blog posts, YouTube videos like this, constantly be learning and constantly be curious. And number five is something that not many people understand, but you need to notice gaps and you need to explore those gaps. So this means looking for unanswered questions or overlooked areas in your field. If you find inefficiencies in a process or a unique problem that just hasn't been solved, that's a good place to start. And you can embrace strangeness. You don't have to shy away from ideas that seem weird or different. If other people are dismissing a hypothesis, maybe you should lean into it just a little bit more. Now, probably the most important point is to work consistently and efficiently. Like I said, it's not so much about working 14 hour days, it's more so about consistently showing up and chipping away at the problem. Because what happens is, as you're chipping away, not only are you avoiding burnout by not working 14 hour days, but you're constantly reinforcing the need to solve this problem. And while you're eating lunch, or while you're sleeping, or while you're in the shower, your subconscious mind is gonna consistently be churning away at this problem and trying to figure out a solution to it. So this means you should take focused burst of work with regular breaks. And when you're working, be at work. Not on the phone, not on Slack, not on YouTube. When you are working, you need to be at work. So set aside specific hours of every day for focus work. And so in summary, working smarter means you want to align your strengths, your interest, and the potential of these things for significant impact. You wanna explore different fields, you wanna dabble in personal projects, and you wanna fail a lot and often. By embracing your curiosity, you can achieve more with less effort. I cannot stress this enough. Being successful has little to do with how hard you work and everything to do 
with what you choose to work on.